In the last section of part one, we had three cells connected together in series. These cells were all three-dimensional structures, which is what they would actually be in real-life applications. To make it easier to illustrate some basic features, cells will be structured in a two-dimensional fashion. The existing cells will be converted from 3D to 2D cells by removing two of the modules that are on opposite sides with respect to each other. Some of the modules that were removed will be used to create another cell. Here we now have a 2D cell. There's a second 2D cell. Here we have a third 2D cell. Now we're going to create a fourth 2D cell from the new surplus of modules. And there it is. These 2D cells are now being connected together to form a topological loop at the scale of the individual cells. Any leg and one next to it on each 2D cell can be used to join it to the rest of the 2D matrix. The matrix is being arranged to form a square pattern. A green line has been drawn to emphasize the pattern's location in the image. Now the matrix is being rearranged to form a trapezoidal pattern, and a green line has been drawn to emphasize this pattern's location in the image. Now we have a square matrix that changed density. Within the matrix, the individual modules moved from the position of the drawn line in light blue to dark blue circles. A rhombus is also possible, regardless of density. This animation shows a diagram of the matrix made of the 2D cells, each labeled A through D. Cell A will basically navigate around the rest of the structure by connecting, disconnecting, and pivoting the legs connected to it, then return to its original position. Also shown is how a cell can both move laterally along adjacent cells and around corners. 
This will now be demonstrated with the 2D cell mockups. Initially, two of the legs are disconnected from each other. A pair of joined legs are pivoted and another pair of legs on the corresponding cells are brought in alignment to connect them together. This first step in the animation is repeated. Here's the next step for both. In these next two steps, we have cell A rounding a corner of cell B. The following two steps now show the translation of cell A from cell B to cell D. Let's take this opportunity to emphasize the presence of a triangular pattern. Momentarily introducing a third dimension, we show how a cell can be flipped around. Now we proceed with the next two steps, which is to round a corner of cell D. The process for rounding this corner is the same as before. In the upcoming image, the blue circle to the left is cell D, and the other is cell A, with green lines showing how all cells are joined to each other. Now let's finish rounding this corner of cell D. Now we show again the translation of cell A, except this time it's from cell D to cell C. In 3D again, a broad range of flexibility is shown. Finishing off the positional translation from cell D to cell C, we show how the process for this was also the same as before. Yet again in 3D, we show how cells have a very broad range of flexibility in their motion to accomplish many reconfiguration tasks. We are now rounding the corner of cell C. Cell A is almost back to its original position. Notice here an optional variation in the sequence of the connecting and disconnecting of the legs. It has now completed the trip around the rest of the structure.